Hi, welcome back to Select Fire. I'm Chris Eager, guns.com. We're here at Galco, giant holster maker, been around for a long time in sunny Phoenix, Arizona. Let's go check them out. Good morning, Chris. Scott Fack. Hey, good to see you, Scott. Welcome to Galco Holsters. Always wanted to be here. You ready for a tour? Yeah, let's go check it out. Let's go. Galco is one of the finest makers of firearms holsters in the world. Their attention to detail, use of high quality materials, and dedicated American craftsmanship is second to none. Before we begin our factory tour, Mike Barham, Galco's media and PR manager, was good enough to tell us a little of the company's history. So Mike, you guys got a kind of a funny start and then wound up getting big through movies and TV and all sorts of kind of iconic stuff out there. Yeah, Chris, that's right. Uh, you know, the company started back in Chicago in 1969. And uh, let me just walk around the showroom here and I'll hit sort of the highlights of the company history. Gotcha. So like I said, the company started back in 1969 in Chicago uh, when a Chicago police officer came into the famous jackass leather company and asked our founder, Mr. Gallagher, to make him a shoulder rig. And what Mr. Gallagher came up with after some pretty extensive research was the original jackass rig. Now this is the sort of Galco signature horizontal shoulder system, a uh, double mag pouch on the offside that kind of balances out the rig. And this is really what launched the famous jackass leather company as a holster manufacturer. This design exploded among Chicago police officers and it really made Mr. Gallagher able to go into the holster business full time. So fast forward a few years and Galco had gained popularity, moved to Phoenix, all that. But the thing that really put us on the map was a little TV show called Miami Vice. Don Johnson wore our jackass rig, which later became the Miami Classic. Uh, for the entire course of the show, starting with a little-known fact, a SIG 220 in the pilot episode. Uh, he moved to the Bren 10 famously for many years and ended out the series with a Smith & Wesson 45 double-action pistol. We've continued with Hollywood for many, many years, uh, ever since Miami Vice, uh, and we've done things with Face Off with Nicolas Cage, for example, those famous Kimber pistols he carried, and even up to the Expendables, which this custom rig we did for Sylvester Stallone, uh, starting in Expendables 2 that he wore throughout the series. Uh, so we've always had a, a very, very good relationship with Hollywood in addition to our work as a concealment holster manufacturer, outdoor gear and things like that. So it's been an awesome journey where we hope to continue on uh, and it's been excellent for us. Without further ado, let's get this tour started. Scott Peck, Vice President of Operations at Galco, was our dedicated tour guide. This is the main manufacturing area. Okay. This is the original building that was built in 1989. Immediately walking in here, you're just like, you're hip. You, you, it smells like a leather shop, like a premium leather shop. You know, I mean, it's, we go to a lot of factories and stuff and it's always oil and grease and, and, and steel and, and stuff. So it's really different to walk in here and you have that, that big leather, you know, hit you, you know. So uh, let's, go, let's go check it out. All right, let's do it. This is our daily use raw materials warehouse. Okay. At peak, we go through 868,000 square feet of leather. 868,000 yes. square feet? Yes, that's 20,000 20, stairs. And if you line them up <laughs> single file, that would be 44 miles of stairs. Holy moly, and that's a year, huh? A year, yes. So this is vegetable tan steer hide. So where do you guys get your uh, leather from? Well, there's two tanneries, veg tan tanneries here in the United States, mm -hmm. and we buy from both of them. Okay, so it's all from American sources. It's not yes. like from Brazil or no, the you know, steer Canada hide is all tanned here in the U.S. Nice. So you buy a Galco holster, you're wearing an American cow. You are. So what's happening here? So this is one of our two spray rooms. This is where we will spray the leather brown and black as well. So with all this expensive leather, how do you ensure that you're not wasting any of it? We do have uh, computer assisted nesting 
as well as very trained eyes of senior cutters, and they do their best to salvage as much of the leather as we possibly can. Gotcha. Let's see how this stuff is cut out then. Okay. The nesting is done here. That's the first step before okay. cutting. And you can see she has some marks where there's scars that we want to cut around. And then she'll turn on the projector. Oh, so, and oh, cool. You can see the holsters that will be cut. And what you saw nested through the projection is now going to be portrayed here on the leather and the cutting heads will cut what you saw in the projector. And they just follow the pattern that was photographed in there. Yeah. A lot of what you guys do is very, you know, old school. I mean, you got leather work, you know, all this stuff, but it's, you're incorporating all this new technology to create a really good product. Sure, so it's obviously a blend. We're, we're, we're very pro technology. In many cases, though, the work is done by hand the same way leather work has been done for hundreds of years. After the leather's been cut, they're going to split it to the correct weight, the correct thickness. So the leather is starting out at 12 and a half ounces. And then after he splits it, we're nine ounces. So essentially what the machine is doing is taking a section of the grain of the leather off getting it to the correct thickness. So it's basically shaving it? it? It is. It takes it off in one even slice, but yes, essentially it's shaving. It's like a giant bandsaw knife horizontally without the teeth. So all of our products have our logo, obviously, as well as a product code and a manufacturing code. In this case, with our center cut steer hide, it's being engraved with a laser. If you look in the window, Chris, you'll see the laser engraving the lower left. Good deal. So Chris, we just saw the latest laser technology putting our logo on products, and now you'll see logos being put on the um, full grain steer high, old school with water and pressure. Oh, that's great. So that's just punched in, huh? Yes. You know, before this machinery, we would have a, a die that you would hold yeah, and have to hammer it in a hammer. This is an automated hammer. So nice. Nice. When the leather has been cut, you essentially have two 90 degree corners, obviously okay. the top and the bottom, but our edges are round. So the first step to achieving that is using an edger. We work on the edges twice in production. Initially, with single thickness edges, and then once the holster is put together, you now have a double edge or two pieces of leather, and then we have heavy, heavier machinery that works around those edges. Gotcha. And it is a multi-step process oh, yeah. that you'll see as we go through. And this is, this is attention to detail type stuff that you couldn't have a machine do. Right? It, so it we is. have to sit there with an eye for it. And yeah, actually, we, we worked for many years trying to develop robotics to do this step and finally gave up. <laughs> <laughs> After the leather's been edged, the next step is the burnish that's done on these wheels. So why, why do you burnish it? Well, that's the next step in rounding okay, okay. the edge, and it polishes the edge at the same time. So, for example, this is the raw edge before anything's been done. Okay, yeah, so it's still rough and, right. and stuff then it's, coming off. It's been edged. Oh, yeah, look at that. Burnished. Okay. So on, on a cheap holster, you may find it'll just have yes. these unfinished edges, whereas you Absolutely. guys are nice and burnished and yeah. feels good. Yeah. And, and, and while that doesn't make a difference for the function or the safety of the holster, it is part of the fit and finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's uh, certainly one place where Delco differs itself from the competition. I mean, Delco's mantra has always been for those that demand the best and know the difference. So it's little nuances like this, as well as several other little things that are proprietary that we won't get into today, that really set Delco apart from the competition. Gotcha. gotcha. And the next step, as you can see, is she is the first coat of paint on the edges. And we normally have several exotic holsters going through the factory. Here's a good example. 
oh. of an alligator and a shark holster. And you can see the edges on these. Our internal standard is when it's finished, the edge needs to feel the same as the rim on a glass drinking glass. <laughs> that's, that's great, that's beautiful. You'll have 13 to 15 coats of edge paint on the edge of our exotics. 13 to 15 yeah, coats? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So some of that should sit there and they, they paint yeah. it and they polish it and paint it. Exactly. And it. Wow. A lot of people don't have this much paint on their house. It just feels like glass. It's so smooth. Yeah. And it's not, it's still, because it's still sitting here, it's not finished. So oh, so have, these aren't even finished? No, no. If it was finished, it would have moved along. How smooth those edges are. They're gluing the holster together here, Chris. Multiple different pieces are attached. As you see, we've got a collar and two plastic attachment points. And then after this collar is sewn, it will then be glued together and the same main seam will be sewn. Harness stitching. It would be the next step after the holster is glued together. The unique part of harness stitching is it perfectly emulates hand sewing, which was done with a needle and an awl, so that each stitch is an independent lock. Okay. So if you, you cut one stitch, it's not just going to come on, all unravel, huh? Correct. It will not unravel like a chain stitch. Okay, okay. So why do you guys do a double stitch here instead of just a single stitch? Well, the belt goes through this in one of two ways through here and out the slot for cross straw or through the two slots for strong side. Okay. And two rows of stitching just creates more strength. Okay. The entire weight of the gun and holster is uh, on this piece as it's attached to your belt. This is impressive. You guys buy these from somebody? Or? No, we make those ourselves in our foundry. Oh, really? So yeah. you have a foundry here? We do. So there are companies that do produce these molds, but we have found um, they're not quite our standard. And that's one of the many benefits of having our own foundry is we can make the molds to our exacting specifications. What do you guys see as your most popular uh, like styles? And uh, what's the most popular guns you make uh, holsters for? And well, by and large, you know, people have learned the bigger the gun, the heavier the gun, the harder the conceal. So for the most part, your compacts and subcompacts are the most popular for us for concealment holsters. So obviously the Glock 43X, the Shield, the SID 365. Of course, we do make other types of holsters other than just concealment. We make field holsters and hunting holsters, and we certainly make our share of uh, holsters for you know, a, a six inch end, for end frame and a python and anaconda. But again, as far as concealment holsters, smaller tends to be where we see the larger numbers. Gotcha, gotcha. Our premium steer hide holsters are still hand molded. Okay. Most of our competitors will press mold, but as you can see, it's all done by hand. First, the leather is um, soaked in water with a few additives into the water. It's allowed to case which is the process where the water gets from the grain to the inner fibers okay. of the leather. And then when it's at the right moisture content, they'll proceed to hand mold. Oh, so all those little grooves, somebody's actually sitting there and pressing that in. Exactly. You asked about what was popular. You know, I mentioned what's very popular today, but the perennial favorites, J-Frame, 3-inch 1911, uh, those certainly have not gone away. And, we make plenty of those. And we do see a resurgence of wheel guns on the market, as has been reported. We've, we've experienced that. Yeah, we, we've noticed that also. A lot, of, a lot of people are making more revolvers. People are buying more revolvers. It's, it's, it's the, the old new thing, or the yes. new old thing, yes. I guess. Well, who would have thought 20 years ago that Kimber would be making a revolver? Yeah, yeah. And, and now you've got companies like Henry making revolvers, too. At the beginning of the tour, we saw a spray room where they were spraying dark Havana dye as well as black dye. Delco's tan is achieved through hand rubbing oil. 
It'll go into a dry room overnight, come back the next day, more hand rub oil, back into the dry room, back and forth three or four times until it's the right color gotcha. and the right penetration of oil. So this is just like sprayed or dipped. I mean, someone's actually sitting there and, and rubbing that in physically to the leather. And just before the hardware is attached, the product is all spray finished. First okay. with a primer and then either with a uh, clear coat or pigmented clear coat. Gotcha. Just for like protection and everything. Yes, yes. We have more edge sanding being done here. You know, we talked about earlier in the process where we worked on the single layer of leather doing the edge work. Once the holster has been combined, you have two thicknesses of leather. It takes a little bit heavier machinery. So she's sanding the edge and then she'll edge it as we saw earlier and it will go through various polishing steps and then painting. So essentially we duplicate the work we did on the single edge early on here on the double edge. Gotcha. So here is one of our larger vacuum forming machines. So we'll see as the Kaida heats up, you'll see the holsters uh, miraculously appear. You know, Delco used to make high depth holsters in the 90s, in the early 90s. Really? And then we stopped. It had lost favoritism with the public. And then we started up again around 2000. Oh, okay. Uh, but um, again, we make uh, many tens of thousands of high depth holsters a year. It's just, as I said, it's dwarfed by our leather reputation. So this is a laser that we're using to punch holes and cut the perimeter on our high depth oh, okay. holster. What we're doing with the laser is cutting the perimeter, punching the holes, and putting the logo and product code. One of our many sewing steps, we have um, the bandages for our ankle holsters. Okay. She's sewing the Velcro onto the neoprene using a computer tacker, much faster than doing it by hand. And it's doing a zigzag pattern. And what we're able to do is to do two rows and the needle will go into the exact hole. Oh, so okay. we'll, we'll get two threads, gotcha. double sewn, in the same holes so for added strength. So that makes stitch yes. really strong. Yes. She's using a Dirt Top Adler sewing machine, one of the finest sewing machines available on the market today. From for, Germany, huh? Yes, for fine sewing of leather. You can see she's sewing a zipper onto a welt this is for one of our concealed carry handbags. A little bit further along, you can see the bag is beginning to take shape. This was the zipper that she was sewing in. In addition to doing our own injection molding, we make our own molds that fit into the injection mold machines. And in order to do that, nowadays you really need CNC machines. So we have two CNC mills here, a CNC lathe, and this is really the beginning process of making a mold hogging out the initial cavities. So here's a good example of a mold where the initial cavities were machined out with the CNC's. Okay. And then all the inserts and the pins, that was all done by hand and assembled here in the final mold assembly shop. This is part that is injection molded in this mold. Okay. So instead of contracting this stuff out and you send the blueprints to somebody and it's like, look, I need 3,000 of these. You guys are like, well, we'll just make our own mold and, and make them in-house. Exactly. So we've been making our own molds for probably close to 30 years. Oh, nice. You know, Mr. Gallagher's goal has always been vertical integration, and he's worked along with our VP of R&D as his right-hand man, and they've developed um, the full mold making integrated into our production. So what do we have going on here? Well, this is one of our four foundry rooms. This is our hot room. Okay. Delco's had a foundry since the early 90s, and this is the latest iteration of it, which is uh, actually quite nice. We've got an endotherm machine, which is a completely sealed, airtight chamber for casting, which really allows us to do precision jewelry oh, wow. quality casting. And you can see that here in some of our buckles. So this stuff you guys make here, huh? Yes, all made in this room and the adjoining three rooms, Phoenix, Arizona. 
when you hear like a holster maker and stuff, you don't think that they have forging rooms and foundry stuff and CNC and I mean, but this stuff is, is beautiful and you're not just buying it somewhere and stamping your name on it and you're actually crafting it here. So. Well, thank you. Look at that. I mean, that's just an honest desk right there. Well, that was the short tour. What did you think? Well, it's, it's great. I mean, coming in here, I guess the preconceived notion was it was just a couple of people sewing some holsters, molding some holsters, but you walk in and it's just totally like from the ground up, every single part, every single step is all under this roof. You're not getting in shipments of stuff from overseas and just stamping your name on it. You guys are actually doing the work here in Phoenix, Arizona. And it's really impressive. Well, thank you very much. Hopefully, a um, few hours we spent this morning, you were able to see the men and women here at Galco making holsters, living up to our factory ethos. We appreciate you having us. Thank you. All right, we had a great time here at Galco here in Phoenix, Arizona. A lot of uh, hardworking American men and women making a lot of great American-made products. Really interesting to see what all they're doing. They've got leather, they've got Kydex, they've got all sorts of just really neat, interesting gun stuff. Uh, if you'd like to check out more, head on over to guns.com. And until then, we'll see you on the next Select Fire. <laughs>